Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up, everybody? Ross Alex here, back with another live stream. Now, today's Tuesday, Tuesday evening. But, of course, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whatever time it is that you're watching this video. Yo, 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 everybody. Uh, if you don't know who I am, if it's your first time here on the broadcast, I'm a full-time real estate entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur at that. I've been investing in real estate since 2014. It's been a few years. I live stream each and every single day, giving you guys tips, tricks to do better in your business, to do more in your business, and of course, make more money, which is why I know a lot of you are here on the broadcast. As you're coming in, before we even get started, go ahead and like this video. Give this video a thumbs up. It'll help me out a lot. It's all you gotta do. It's right there. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just hit that like button for me. Yo, Brenna, what's up? Welcome to the broadcast. Randy is in the building. What's up, Randy? Welcome to the broadcast. Hope everybody's having a great freaking day, man. Great evening. Great afternoon all around. Today was incredible. I closed on a deal today. I sold it. And when I was leaving the title company... Yo, Michael, welcome to the show. When I was leaving the title company this afternoon, I, I met the buyer. Somehow, I met the buyer. Um, the agent that was representing the buyer, real cool guy, he, he goes, are you Ross? And uh, I was making myself a coffee. And then my escrow officer was like, yeah, yeah, that's Ross. And typically, you know, buyers and sellers and transactions don't meet each other. Um, you know, we close at different times. But I ended up meeting the buyer on this deal and congratulated him and his family. They got a sweet deal. Sweet deal. Sold the house for 160K. Bought it for 75K. 75K, man. Sold it for 160. Let's go. Can I get a let's go in the chat? What up? Oh my God, real estate is super hectic today. I wrote up 13 offers today for my agents. Wow. Yeah, real estate's popping off, man. It's busy season right now. And that's why I wanted to talk about the blueprint that I would recommend for everybody. If you want to buy your first deal, I'm going to share with you what I would recommend for you to do. Okay? Does that sound good to you guys? Does that sound like something that you want to know? The blueprint, right? Now, I can't give you the whole blueprint because I don't have too much time, but I'm going to give you some pointers, okay? And by the end of this little live stream, you're going to have more clarity, okay? More clarity, more focus, more energy to go out there and lock up a deal. Yo, Andrew Johnson, welcome to the broadcast. Thanks for stopping by. Brenna is a transaction coordinator. That's freaking awesome. And friends... If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you, man. Thank you for being on YouTube. I re-upload these streams to YouTube. If you want to see them first, hit me up on Facebook. And if you're watching this on Instagram or LinkedIn, thank you so much for stopping by, man. Thank you. Man, what a freaking day. Springtime. Lucy Williams, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. So, um, man, dude. I'm not a candy fan. I'm not. I'm not a candy fan. You know, it's like either you're a salt fan or, or a sweet fan. Let me know. What are you? Are you salty or sweet? I'm salt. I'm talking chips, french fries. I'm not a, I'm not a sweet guy. But I was in Target the other day, and they're doing an Easter blowout special on their candy. So I grabbed these Starburst Jelly Beans. Can you believe how much I got these Starburst Jelly Beans for a bit? They killed my stomach yesterday, which is why I'm not a sweet fan. Like, I don't know, candy just doesn't do it for me, but I couldn't resist. I'm like, you know what, give it a shot. My friends, 75 cents. You got, you got to love a good deal, man. You got to love a, a good bargain. Salt, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the salt. You know, some people do, they do the cakes, they do the, the, uh, the pie. I mean, I'll do it once in a while, but I'm more of the candy fan, uh, the, the, the salt fan over candy and stuff like that and chocolate. Salted and sweet caramel all day. I feel you, I feel you. You automatically get notified. 
Well, Brenna, I appreciate you so much for stopping by. All right, so let's get into the content, man. Let's get into the content. So, if you guys have been tuning in for a while, for a couple weeks, couple months, couple years, you know that I always remind you that there's many different niches within real estate, right? And it's so important to know that because real estate covers so much ground. In fact, everything you see, right? Everywhere you look, there's real estate. There's skyscrapers, right? Like out there. There's apartment blocks. There's industrial plazas, warehouses, right? There's shopping centers. There's uh, multifamily, right? Duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes. There's single family houses. There's land. There's so many different aspects of real estate okay and uh primarily i talk about single family real estate so when you come on the show and you're like ross is talking about real estate what kind of real estate are you talking about ross i'm talking about single family houses right and uh the blueprint that i want to share with you has to do with single family houses okay single family yeah absolutely brenda title survey appraisal commercial residential agents for sure, 100%, those are niches as well. I should have said product, right? The products that you can buy. So check this out, my friends. If you want to buy a single family house, okay? Uh, there is many different places that you can start. Yo, Larry Nelson, welcome to the broadcast, Larry. Um, there's many different places where you can start, okay, my friends? Um you can get started in uh, single family, multifamily, commercial, yada, 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 so on and so forth, right? And there's also different price points in which you can start at, right? Because even if you narrow it down even further, right, there's different levels to the single family game. You got the lower end market, right? The bottom of the market. You have the middle market and you have the high end market, right? The million dollar houses. Uh, the middle market would be like the, you know, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar houses, maybe even seven, eight hundred thousand dollar houses, right? And then you have the the lower end, right? Which for me, I categorize the lower end as two hundred fifty thousand dollars and lower, which is my niche. That's my genre, right? And I recommend that everybody that's interested in real estate, and this is my recommendation, not anybody else's recommendation, but I recommend that if you want to get in the single family house flipping, you should start in the lower end market as well. Why? Because it has a very low barrier of entry to get involved, right? Why does it have a low barrier of entry? Because it's cheaper. It's cheaper real estate. And if it's cheaper real estate, you have to borrow less capital, right? And typically if it's cheaper real estate, there's less that can go wrong because we're dealing with smaller numbers. Right. And that's just my opinion. Uh, many people may share that opinion with me, but I get asked that all the time. It's like, Ross, well, why don't you do million dollar flips? Well, that's just not my game. Right. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not my game. Why don't you do seven hundred thousand dollar flips? Well, that's just not my game. Right. You have to carve out your niche, my friends, and you have to be the best at doing what you do. Right. And then you can start to explore into other aspects of real estate or you can swap asset classes. It's totally up to you. My fiance said that's cryptocurrency guy. It's Tuesday. Are you watching your podcast guy? Yeah. Cryptos is uh, crypto talks is tomorrow night. David McSween. Welcome to the broadcast, David. Right. So I would recommend that you get started in the 250 K and under market. So you're talking about less money to borrow. Okay, less that can go wrong, right? Generally speaking, why less that can go wrong? Well, because when you're building a new house, like let's say you were gonna do new construction, there's a lot more moving parts, okay? When we're buying, fixing, and flipping, during that renovation period, we're typically doing uh, things, we're just making improvements, right? We're painting the walls, we're putting down floors. I mean, there's not much that can go wrong. Can stuff go wrong? Yeah, it can. But there's not much that can go wrong, all right? Yo, Thomas Dunnigan, welcome to the broadcast, Thomas. Thank you for being here, man. So, um, I would stick to the 250K market, okay? 
And uh, what I would look for is what most homeowners are looking to buy, right? Think about what your end buyer is looking for. Now, do you think that more people are looking for four bedrooms, two bathroom houses with a two car garage? Or do you think that they're looking for two bedroom, one bathroom houses with a carport, right? If you were to put those two up here and take a poll, which one, let me know in the chat, do you think that more people would be interested in buying, right? What is there a more bigger demand for? Starting out, would you suggest a hard money loan? Yeah, why not? Hard money is a, definitely a great resource. It's available and they practically beg you to take their money. Do you find your, uh, do you buy from wholesalers or find your own leads? Uh, a combination of both, but more, more so I've been buying a lot more from wholesalers lately and agents. Uh, but I do do my own marketing. James, welcome on to the, to the broadcast, by the way. Three, two and a half. Three, two, right? So your three twos and your four twos, right? Um, are going to be like more desired by the majority of end buyers, okay? So as a rehabber for your first deal, I would strongly advise against buying a two bedroom, one bathroom, unless the market allows you to make an addition to that property and add some livable square footage, okay? Now that's gonna also increase your budget, so you need to make sure that you're buying deep enough. Write that one down. If you want to be a real estate investor, you have to buy deep, my friends. That's probably one of the best pieces of advice I could ever give you. You have to buy deep. The reason why my deal today was a success was because I bought it deep. I bought it less than 50% of what it's worth, right? You have to buy deep. Don't go out buying any crappy deals just for the sake of doing a deal, okay? Don't do it because this game will ruin you. You'll lose and you don't wanna lose. I don't want you to lose. You don't wanna lose. Don't lose. Don't put yourself in a high stress situation. High stress is not always good, my friends. High stress doesn't always mean that there's gonna be a bigger reward. It doesn't. Sometimes we put ourselves in unnecessary, highly stressful situations. And we're like, shit, what did I just do here, right? Who can relate? You will lose your sanity, Brenna. Absolutely, absolutely, right? So, uh, unless it's in a historic desire bear that, yeah, but see, Brenna, then you're talking about buying for appreciation, okay? And that can also be a little dangerous for an investor that's starting out, right? Uh, if you're simply buying, you know, uh, for appreciation purposes, right? Because you think that the area is going to, uh, you know, blow up, explode. Um, so what I would do instead of, and remember, this is for your first deal. Okay. Instead of going after a two, one to make additions and do all these, have to pull all these different permits. And now you're managing this, this job right? I would get a three, two or a four, two with a two car garage. Okay. Buy it for as deep as possible. And I would make sure that that property didn't need too much work. Okay. What does too much work mean? Well, too much work in the single family space means that it needs all of the big ticket expenses. What are the big ticket expenses? My friends, who can tell me in the chat? Hey Ross, at an airport in Cebu, Philippines, heading back to US, catch the replay when I return. Thanks for all you do, I appreciate it. Well, dude, thank you so much for stopping by, Brian. Hope you had a lovely time over there in the Philippines. I got a couple friends in uh, Cebu, actually. And um, I have your book going out. It'll, get, it'll be at your front door when you arrive, man. When you get home, your book will be there, brother. James says the roof, foundation, roof, major renovations. Yes, my friends, foundation, roof, HVAC. Yes, these are the big ticket expenses, okay? And if you buy a property or you're looking at a property that needs all of those big ticket expenses and the property is, let's say, 1,500 square feet, 2,000 square feet, you're already looking at a hefty rehab, okay? Let's just say that property is 2,000 square feet and you need all of those big ticket expenses, 
you're probably looking at about 25 to 30K, okay? Just in those expenses, not including the cosmetics. So it's very easy to get into the 50, 60K range, renovation wise, if you add in all of those things, okay? And then there's gonna be a lot of moving parts. Yo, Ryan, welcome to the broadcast. Matt, foundation, roof, electrical, plumbing, AC, boom. There you go. Anthony Guzman, what's up, buddy? Mechanical system, electrical, plumbing. Absolutely, my friends. Those are the big tickets. So my first deal, right? My first deal was what I like to call a layup deal, okay? And a layup deal is a property that needs renovation. It needs love, okay? But it doesn't need too much love, okay? It's nothing that we can't handle, right? And, uh, as a real estate entrepreneur, when you start doing this, you're going to realize that properties that look like they need a lot of work don't always need a lot of work, okay? Uh, for example, sheetrock, that's a quick fix. Damaged flooring, that's a quick fix. It may look horrendous, but it's not gonna cost you much, okay? Um, whereas if the slab is all jacked up, right, that's gonna be a few grand. Typical foundation costs that I pay are three to five grand per house, right? Three to five grand just on the foundation, right? Rewiring a whole house, your 1,500 square foot house, you're looking at, you know, four grand, th three to four grand. So you imagine you had to do both of those things. Now you're getting closer to 10K for two items, okay? But 10K in the cosmetic world goes a lot further. Okay, you can paint the house, put new floors down, get fixtures, hardware, all for 10K, okay? So, what I would suggest is that you find one of these layup deals, okay? A property that just needs some cosmetics, right? Some touch-up. Now, can it need a big ticket expense? It can, it can. Let's just say for the majority, the, the property is cosmetic, but it does need a new roof, okay? Well, a new roof can cost you anywhere between five and $10,000. So you just add that into your cost, right? And that won't be too much to handle. But my point here is my friends, for your first deal, I would not recommend that you buy a doozy. Okay, because some of the most challenging deals that I've had to push through were doozies. I'm talking about, I, man, I need everything. I might as well just bulldoze the house and build a new one because this house needs it all, right? And on top of needing it all, it has termites. And in addition to the termites, it has rot. And in addition to the rot, it has cracked pipes, right? And it becomes this nightmare because the property that you're buying is just too distressed. Now, can you handle it? Of course you can, you'll get there, but we're talking about your first deal, right? What should you be looking for for your first deal is a layup deal. Rachel, what's up? Welcome on. Um, what about investment properties that have tenants in them and you receive rents, but we'll have to do a slight modification to them after the lease is up. Okay, let me read that one more time. What about investment properties that have tenants in them and you receive rents, but we'll have to do a slight modification to them. Okay, so Brenna, are you saying that if I'm a landlord and I own a rental property and I have tenants in there and I know that the property has some deferred maintenance and when they move out, I'm going to have to do that deferred maintenance? Is that what you're, is that what you're asking? Because if so, you absolutely do, right? And those rehabs are typically called like make readies, right? There's gonna be wear and tear on that property. So you have to make the property rent ready again because the tenants are moving out. If not, let me know. Uh, do you buy off uh, MLS to fix and flip or would you prefer not to have the prior transaction public? James, I buy properties on MLS all the time. Uh, in fact, I just bought one like three weeks ago. Um, I bought a ton of MLS deals. HUD deals, right, foreclosures, seller to buyer. I love getting deals off MLS because they're simple deals and they're easy deals, but you have to make sure that you know what you're doing and you know how to separate the trash from the treasure and you know how to negotiate a sick deal. My friends, we have 12 likes on this video. Can you help get me to 15 likes? Can, can you guys help me get 15 likes on this video? Everybody hit that like button right now, man. I really, really, really appreciate it. Let's see, can you guys get me to 15 likes? We need three likes, that's it, three. Who hasn't liked the video? 
Yo, Anthony, thank you so much for liking, man. When you guys like the video, it helps the video perform better, right? Engagement helps videos perform better, and uh, that would support me. Yo, Alexandra Brooks, welcome onto the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, I want to recap here, okay? When you're starting out, you, you go out there, you want to buy a fix and flip. You're excited, right? You want to do it. You've seen it, and you want to do it yourself, okay? I want you to go out there and look for a property, sub 250K, a 3-2 or 4-2, preferably uh, with the garage. It could also have a carport, right, depending on where you live. Um, and, and look for a property that needs cosmetics, right? A layup deal. How can I buy this property deep, make some updates to it, renovate it, right? Do some paint, do some hardware, do some fixtures, do some floors, right? Completely bring that property up to retail quality and then throw it on the market, make a profit, right? How can I do that? Once you do that, my friends, you're going to master it, okay? You can do one, you can do a hundred. You do a hundred, you can do a thousand. My mentor always says, Ross, if you can raise a hundred thousand, you can raise a hundred million. You just got to add a couple zeros. And it's true. It's true, right? Who's ever been there before? You did something once, the next time you do it, all of a sudden, it's second nature, right? Because it's familiar. It's like driving somewhere you've never been before. At first... You had to use your GPS. You're like, man, where the hell am I going? Right? Second time, it, it's a little more memorable. Third time, you are already, you already know where to go. Sort of. Let's say you purchase a property that has tenants and they have six months left on a lease. And after the lease is up, you have to do, let's say, 15K to upgrade it to receive either 500 more a month or sell it for, thir or sell it for 35 to 45K more than what you bought it for. Okay, so... Personally, I probably wouldn't be buying a property that's tenant occupied. That just doesn't meet my investment criteria, right? But um, it happens, right? It happens. Uh, after the lease is up, I, what I would do is I would just work it into my numbers, right? Uh, it, it depends on your strategy. So if you're buying the property, let's just say tomorrow, and I think I got what you're asking, right? Let's just say tomorrow I found a deal that has uh, it's tenant occupied and there's six months left on the lease, right? And I know that I can buy that deal and when those tenants move out, I can fix it up and I can sell it retail and make a, a nice profit, right? If that's my strategy going into it, well, I'm gonna have to structure some financing so that I can borrow money to cover that six month time, right? Use the money that the tenants are paying to now service the debt that I borrowed, right? And uh, when they move out, then I'm gonna fix it up and then I'm gonna sell it for a profit. So you're probably gonna need financing for longer than six months, or not even probably, you are gonna need financing for longer than six months, and probably closer to 12 months of financing, right? Which those options are out there. And I would make sure that I was buying that deal deep enough, deep enough, so that, um, regardless of what they do to the property, because sometimes tenants completely destroy properties um, intentionally or not intentionally, right? I would I bought it deep enough so that I can still make a profit. And I bought it with the end in mind, knowing that I'm gonna be completely renovate the property, number one. Number two, if they had six months left on the lease and they were moving out and I wanted to raise rents, well, you're gonna have to do a make ready anyway. Right, which is why landlords will always do what they can to keep their spaces rented because if the tenant is there, then the landlord doesn't have to make it ready. Right, Like in my place, if I moved out tomorrow, they're going to have to come in here and they're going to have to put money. Well, I mean, we keep our place pretty damn nice, but you get what I'm saying. They're going to have to fix it up and hire the cleaners and paint the walls, yada, yada, yada. It's going to cost them a lot of money, right? So that's why landlords will always try to keep their properties tenant occupied. So what I would do is I, if, I, if I bought it, six months left on the lease, I'd go to the tenants, hey, I, I, I'd love to extend your lease. This is what the new rate would be. If they don't go for it, I'd say, okay, well, that's the new rate, unfortunately. And um, I would have to do my make ready, but I bought the property deep enough, so I already knew that. Pretty much my answer is you got to start with the end in mind. You have to know what you're going to be doing, right? You have to know 
what your goal is. Like for example, one of my rental properties, tenants, uh, tenants lease is up in August and I bought the property subject too, right? So I don't have any personal debt on it. And um, they've, I oh mean, great tenants, absolutely great tenants. Like that's why screening tenants is one of the most important things that you can do as a landlord, right? Screening tenants, making sure that you're, you know, really picking who you think is going to be the best tenant. Anyhow, um, I offered them because I'm interested in selling the property anyway. So I offered to them, hey, if you're interested in making this house yours, I'll sell it to you. And that we're going to have conversations about that. Now, if they don't want to buy it from me and they move out, what am I going to have to do, friends? I'm going to have to make it ready and put more money into it and fix it up and make it nice again and then sell it on the retail market, right? Are you renting personally or do you own? Uh, do I own? Own. Do I own? I rent. I rent. I'll always rent. I don't think I'll ever buy a house to live in. Uh, personally. Always rent. Like Grant Cardone says. So start backwards and work your way back. Yeah, pretty much everything you wanted, everything you do in business, you should always start with the end in mind. Why do I rent? Because I believe that you should rent where you live and own what you can rent, right? Renting gives you less headaches. Renting gives you less liabilities. Renting gives you mobility, right? And personally, I love amenities. So my, you know, my valet parking, my concierge, I don't get those things if I own. So, uh, you know, gyms and all that cool stuff comes and uh, mobility, right? I'm never stuck in one place. I need to go where opportunity goes. As entrepreneurs, we're not trees, right? People are in trees. So I believe that tomorrow, if I get an opportunity in Cali or in Wisconsin, I need to be able to go out there and and, 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 and seize that opportunity. Um, I'm not ready to settle down and you know have that white picket fence lifestyle in one town, right? I need to be able to move around and you know flip and dip. But that that works for me. That doesn't work for everybody. Um, and and also I I own what I rent, right? So the properties that I do own, I rent them out to other people. So I can cash flow, if that makes sense. Who do we have here right now? Who is live, right? You're not a tree. You can move. Some people swear that they're just trees, right? It's like they never move. They just stay stay still where they're at. And they always complain that there's, all, there's no opportunities where they're at as if anybody's forcing them to stay there. Who do we have live right now on the stream? Who's lurking? Who... I see you lurking, man. Why are you lurking? Who's lurking right now? If you're lurking, let me get a I'm lurking in the chat. Carlos, what's up, buddy? Carlos, it's good to see you. Yo, Manny J, thanks for liking the stream. Guys, let me know. Are you digging this content, man? I want to get you fired up, guys. I want to help people, man. I've, I've helped hundreds of people get into their first real estate deal. Hundreds. Literally, go on my website. You'll see testimonial after testimonial after testimonial. I, I always help people uh, get into their first deal, second deal, third deal. And for those of you that are paying attention to these broadcasts, chances are if you haven't done your first deal yet, you're going to do one. You're going to do one, man. You're going to do one. Steven's lurking. What's up, Steven? Yeah, a lot of people just like to just like to lurk. Man, we got 21 likes on the show tonight, man. Thank you. Who's lurking? Who's working? Frank Owens in the building. Man, what's up, Frank? Cody Mack is here. Thank you so much. Yo, Cody, man. Thank you. Thanks so much for liking the stream, man. Much thanks to you. Yo, <laughs> lurking, lurking. Hey, it's okay to lurk sometimes. You know, just say what's up and go back to lurking. I hope too soon. Cody, you will, man. You will. You will. There comes a point, you know, my friends. There comes a point where it's like, yeah, you have to really take a look at yourself, man. Take a look. Take a look at yourself and what you got going on in your life and, 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 and ask yourself, what do you have to lose? Right? What is the worst thing that could possibly happen? What's the worst thing? That's what I told myself. 
Before I got on that plane and moved down to Houston, I packed one bag. You know what I told myself? I said, what the hell do I have to lose? My job? My bartending job? They're a dime a dozen. What do I have to lose? Nothing. The answer is nothing. I had nothing to lose. And I decided to go all in. And a lot of you are in a point right now in your life where you haven't went all in yet. And, 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 and I don't know what you're waiting for. Yo, Anthony Burns, welcome to the broadcast. Anthony Morales, welcome to the broadcast. Right? Either you're all in or you're all out. I believe that. That's my. That's one of my favorite sayings. I don't. I truly don't believe that there's an in between. I don't think you could be. You could ever get real results doing stuff half the way. I don't believe that. Right? It's like if you, if you, <laughs> you can't either you eat clean or you eat bad. Like you have a poor diet or a nice diet. Like I don't. I don't think there's an in between there. That's not healthy. Right? It's like I'm gonna have McDonald's today and a salad tomorrow, and then McDonald's again, and then a salad tomorrow. Like that just doesn't work. Unfortunately, you're never gonna be healthy, right? Because you're still eating McDonald's. When if you want to be healthy, you shouldn't be eating McDonald's, right? So it's like in business, if you're all in. Or if, if, if you're, you're, you're focused on your game all day long, all night long. And if you're all out, you're just not. But if you're in between, it's like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to work, 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 work. The next day I'm going to lay on the couch all day. The next day comes. All right, today I'm going to work, 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 work. The next day I'm going to lay on the couch all day. You'll never get results like that. Nothing but your sanity. Oh, wait, I've already lost. Hey, that's okay, Brenna. It happens to the best of us. I, I lose my sanity all the time. What's your number one source of deals? You, Anthony. Send me another deal, bro. You're my, that's why I haven't been buying deals because you ain't been sending them. I bought one house from you and you cut me off like a freaking water spigot, man. Come on. I have multiple sources. I buy from wholesalers. I buy directly to sellers. Like the other day, we locked one up directly to the seller. Uh, with the seller and I and I and I have a lot of agents. I actually did a broadcast It's on my YouTube channel Where I talk about how I get my deals and, and where the majority of my deal flow comes from Frank says I'm all in dude I love it waiting on a bull run. Hey, it's coming man <laughs> Dude the bull runs coming man, but Manny man you haven't been on the live streams lately I haven't seen your name man. If you have time tomorrow night, we're gonna go live It's gonna be one of the best Shows that we've ever done because we have a special guest joining us. And this guy's like a crypto wizard. Yo, Angelica, welcome to the broadcast. I want to shout some more people out, man. Who liked the stream? Who liked the stream? Yo, Quentin, man, thank you so much for liking the stream, brother. I appreciate you. Alma, thank you so much for liking. Hernante, Eric, thank you so much for liking. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I got some deals in San Antonio that need sold. I got some people out there in San Antonio that can definitely take a look at those deals. Um, definitely. I have a I have a nice network out there. Love San Antonio. And uh, if they're solid deals, send them to me. Hey, Angelica, welcome. So look, for those of you that are just tuning in, we talked about the blueprint that I would recommend you use to go out and buy your first deal, okay? If you want to see that or hear that, you're not really going to see it because I didn't show you anything, but if you want to hear what that blueprint is, watch the replay, okay? And if you're watching the replay right now in the future, I want to say thank you. Hashtag replay in the chat. Been slaving in the kitchen. I'll be on tomorrow, dude. Thank you, man. I hope to see you there, brother. I used to work in the kitchen too, man. I used to do food prep for like six hours every morning. I had to cut like a thousand lemons every day. Every single day. A thousand. You know what it's like to cut a thousand lemons? Your hands turn to prunes. It's not fun. It's not fun. I used to have to make sauce. Because I worked in an Italian restaurant. I know what it's like, man. But you know what? There's light at the end of the tunnel. Yo, Mario Cabrera. Welcome to the stream, Mar Mario. Thank you for being here, man. You should set up groups for individuals 
that have their own way of putting in money contractors, RE agents, etc., for different areas around the states, and they can link up and help each other. Like I have my GC in Cali, and I have agents and brokers bringing in the deals. We all just don't have the funds. So, so Cody, man, and I think I've talked to you about this before, right? So, so let let's go over this. Uh, the, the the limiting funds belief, if, if that's cool with you, okay? That's daytime bartending, dude. Yeah, brother, right? Every morning when I used to bartend at the Houston Texans Grill, I had to make the margarita mix. Freaking limes. More limes than a freaking lime tree. I swear, it's crazy. I don't think that made sense, but it's all good. More limes than Kroger. Yeah, dude. Dude, so feel me on this, man. Cody, the money is the most difficult part. Uh, I... <laughs> I'm going to take this L. I'm going to take this L for saying that. And I can't even delete it because we're live. The money is the most simplest part. Because, dude, look, let me show you something. I'm going to show you something right now. Check this out. If I just pull up Google right now and I type in hard money lenders, California, do you see all these resources? Asset based financing. You see all these resources? All these resources, Cody, they will beg you to take their money. Because realize this, my friends. Hard money lenders, they only make money when they cut out loans. If they're not cutting loans, they're not making money. They need you to borrow the money so they can make money. That's how lending works, right? They don't want 20%. Come on. They, want, they wouldn't be in business for 20%. Typical hard money rates are two points up front, 12% annual. Two per points up front, 8% annual, right? Maybe three points. I mean, it all depends. But I've never, ever, 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 ever seen a hard money lender. I think that's even, a, uh, that's that's illegal. You can't even charge 20%. That's like, uh, there's laws against that. I've talked to a lot of lenders, but they all want something. I mean, typically a lender wants you to have skin in the game. If you don't have the skin in the game... Drop your phone a few times and you'll get some skin. Two to three points average. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? What I would say is if you don't if you don't have the money to put the skin in the game, like let's say you find a lender and they're like, hey, we'll lend you out, but we're going to need you to put up two points. And if you're borrowing, let's say, two k, a 200K, right, that's going to be 4K. If you don't have the 4K, just go find a partner who's willing to put up a deal uh, put, put up 4K on a deal. Like, let me ask the chat. Chat. If I had a deal tomorrow, and I asked you guys on live stream, say, hey, who wants to partner with me on this deal? To partner with me on this deal, to become a limited partner, you're going to need to just put a few K up on the table, and, and, and we'll walk up into the deal. I'll handle the financing. I'll handle the acquisition. I'll handle the renovation. I just need somebody out there to put up 5K to pay these lender points up front. And uh, and that's it. You'll become a limited partner. And we can discuss the terms and everything. 20% um, Cali. Who would be up for that? I'm in. Jeff says I'm in. Let's do it. Let's roll, Jeff. Bullcrap. I did a deal the other day for 20% 20 per, 20 down. Yeah, 20% down... On the front end, not 20% interest rate. Are we talking interest rate or are we talking down payments? Because down payments is a different game. If you're talking interest rates, nobody's charging you 20% interest rates in, in the hard money world. They just wouldn't be in business. There's too many competitors, right? If we're talking about down payments, then yes, 20% down payment uh, is the typical conventional down payment, right? But when you're going through a hard money lender, you're not using conventional financing. You're not putting 20% down. I'd sell my BTC tomorrow. 
Mario. Oh my goodness. I just dropped. All right. All right. All right. All right. I can only drop my phone so many times. The tripod's on the way. I promise. Uh, I tell my VTC, dude, that's a great comment. Down payment interest was 9.75%. And that's not bad, right? But 20% down is, uh, you know, for an investor deal, I'm, I'm, I'd am I'm, love to see where they got, wh what lender they're using that's one 20% down. Matt, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Uh, yep, buyers on my property said, well, why so much? I'm only asking 35 down payment, 35% down payment, minimum from stuff. And I say, I got to have your skin in the game so I know you don't. Exactly, if you own or financing a deal, you have to, you have to, you have to have that down payment because if they skip out on you, you need a, you need a little bit of uh, recourse, right? You need some, you know? So, so Cody, I don't know who that lender is in particular, but I'll promise you that I can connect you with 20 different lenders that'll write you a loan, seven day close, they don't even care about your credit score because they're strictly worried about the asset. And uh, look, bottom line here, okay, because I don't know all the companies, bottom line here is if I can do it, you can do it. Trust me. If I can do it, you can do it. There's private funds out there. You just saw three people just come up and say, hey, I'll partner with you, Ross. Get on a live stream, man. Do what I do and, 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 and announce to the world that you're looking for partners Start posting in the forums and more and more people will flock your way, man. I promise you. Or, dude, Cody, man, grab this program, brother. Fliponfire.com. Talk to me in a year from now, bro. You'll be freaking slaying the game. I promise you. I'll put my business up or my truck. Yeah, man, but you don't want to do that, brother. You don't want to do that. When you're investing, you, you want to make sure that you're in a good spot, okay? You don't want to invest and start you know, liquidate, you don't want to do that, man. No, uh, stack up your money, stack up your resources and start networking with people. That message you just put, man, that's a great message. But dude, Cody, man, you should even be focused on some wholesale deals, brother. Or you know what would be good, man? Get your agent's license, dude. Become an agent, start doing some listings, get those fat commissions. Mario says, dude, if numbers make sense and there's money to be made, you will find people to partner with you in a heartbeat. No questions asked. Exactly. Exactly. Because, my friends, there's a trillion dollars in retirement accounts in this country, okay? And uh, people can't make money in the banks. They just can't do it. You cannot make money in a bank. So you need to invest into alternative investments, right? But remember that when somebody invests with you they're not just investing into your deal they're investing into you as a brand so if you don't have a brand you definitely want to build up a brand and start building trust amongst the community so that once you start building attention for yourself people already know you or they can at least look at you and see some sort of digital resume or see some track record or see stuff that you've done for the community I started putting ads up. I'm working on my real estate license. I already have GC. I'm going to have every uh, LIC or certification in the next few years. Dude, compress that, man. Compress it, bro. Compress it. Compress it. Just my opinion, compress it. Pick one avenue, bro, and be the beast. Be the beast. Guys, you know what I would do? You know what I would have done? If I, if I didn't become a real estate investor, you know what I would have done? You know what I would have did? Ask me. Say, Ross, what would you have done? I'm going to grab my phone charger so it doesn't die. And I'll be right back, all right? A bat. That was quick, right? If I didn't become a real estate investor and I and had I continued on the path, I would have went to trade school, I would have became a plumber, and I would have started my own plumbing company. Because plumbers make fat dough. Fat dough, the fattest of the dough. 
I would have started my own plumber company and I would have had like 20 trucks running the city. Whatever you need. You need new pipes, I got you. You got a clogged toilet, I got you. You got a clogged sink, I got you. You know how much it costs to hire a plumber to come and unclog your sink? You know how much it costs? <laughs> Man, I would have, I would have, I, maybe I'll still do it. Who knows? I would have started a plumbing company, man. But, but not just one little local company. I would have started like a, like a, a, a brand, right? And just maybe even become a national brand. Have like, you know, 30, 30 offices all over the place. Right? If entrepreneurship ain't for you, <laughs> I go to trade school. If I could do it all over again, and like, not if I could, because I, I would still be a realist in real estate. But like, if I never found business, I would have probably just went to trade school, man. Because trades are where it's at. If you can learn a trade, how old are you, bro? Seventeen, brother. Seventeen. You need contacts with insurance adjusters to make it as a plumber, bro. Done. Done, brother. Done. Make all those contacts. I'll, I'll network with everybody. Um, yeah, look, man, we got some networking going on here. Mario, we got Cody. My, yo, Mike, welcome to the stream. Good idea, Ross. I would have started an AC and heat. Yo, dude, AC and heating companies, they do. If you can do it right and figure out the business portion of it and you have the trade portion of it, forget it, man. Trades can take over the world. <laughs> What's up, Mike? Welcome, man. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Yo, friend, tries, friend, cheese, Fred, welcome to the stream. I'm so sorry if I said your name wrong. Ross is the RE King. I, I wish I was the RE King, man. I just do my thing, you know. But uh, once again, man, I thank you so much for being here. Seriously, it means the world to me, dude. Every time it blows me away that... I could just turn on the stream and have cool people to talk to. Um, we're at 28 likes. Can I get 30 likes? If you're here right now and you have not liked the stream, can you just please hit that thumbs up button? Just hit the thumbs up just once. Just tap it. Just tap it. Let's see if we can get the 30 likes. I did solar HVAC uh, installation for about seven years. Nice. Yo, Mike, thanks for liking the stream, dude. Appreciate you, man. We got to... Mike, we got to catch up, brother. Vegas soon or what, dude? Vegas soon or what, bro? Meet me at the Cosmo. Janie, what's up, Janie? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, wow, we got the 30 likes, man. Thank you, guys. You guys are freaking awesome. Um, yeah, dude. Yo, Mario, thank you so much for liking. Rodney Redman, thank you so much. You still getting deals out in Pasadena? Yeah, man. So I sold one deal today in Pasadena. And I have... Three more Pasadena deals. That are going to be hitting... The, or that are going to be closing soon. Yeah, they're under contract. Well, two of them are under contract. One of them's being renovated. And then I got another. Yeah. Pasadena, absolutely. Better stay out of there, Mario. It's my turf, man. I don't want to see you over there in Pasadena, bro. Unless you're selling me something. I'm just kidding. But anyways, guys, thank you so much, man. Really, um, I don't know how long I've been live for. Let me check. Been live now for, holy smokes, 48 minutes. It's crazy. I literally remember starting the stream like five minutes ago. It's, it's nutty. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you so much for subscribing to the YouTube channel and thumbsing up the video. My YouTube channel is growing, man. I'm getting a couple hundred subscribers over the past 30 days. So if you haven't subscribed on YouTube and you have a YouTube account, please subscribe. And uh, if you're watching this on a replay, thank you. Hey, Mario, thanks for stopping by. As to everybody, thank you so much. Now, of course, I'll be live tomorrow. We do this every day, every single day. If you want to get notified when I go live, make sure that you're uh, following this page. This Facebook page, make sure that you're following it. Because with Facebook's algorithms, you probably won't see my post until after the fact, right? Especially if you just tuned in 
and you missed the blueprint. Now you got to go watch the replay. So make sure you're following this so that when I go live, it notifies you. It says, hey, Ross Alex is live now. Tune in, right? Who wouldn't want that? Rick Rodriguez, welcome to the broadcast, man. All right, with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast. But I'll see you guys tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Central Time. We have the mega late night crypto chat. If you're a crypto investor, you want to be a crypto investor, stop by, check it out, right? There ain't nothing wrong with diversification, man. Don't let anybody ever tell you that. You put all your eggs in one basket. Dude, never put all your eggs in one basket, man. I would never suggest that. Because what happens if that basket tips over, man? Diversify, right? How could you get paid from this and this? And this and this so if this isn't doing good this is if this isn't doing good this is right ain't nothing wrong with that but there's a difference between diversification and shiny coin syndrome where you're just involved in too many things right what's up baby ross you the man bro dude rick thank you man it means so much to me brother much love ecom dude love ecom love ecom i've been in e-commerce for four years man E-commerce is definitely one of the things that led to, um, you know, a lot of my success was the power of the internet. The power of the internet, whether it was creating this program, my own program, flip on, uh, flipping on fire, uh, or anything else I sell online. You know, e-commerce. You know, one thing I did, I wanted to do a stream on this, but I never did. So I did a test. I always like testing stuff like off camera and uh, seeing what kind of results I can get and then talking about it so I can show everybody something. So what I did was me and Nicole went around the house. Okay, everybody should do this. Let me know if you're still here because I know a lot of people left. Yo, Bryce, welcome to the stream, Bryce. Thanks for the motivation. Absolutely, Janie, you know I always got you. So uh, I went around the house, okay? And uh, I just I had so much stuff laying around, right? Who else can relate to that? You just have so much stuff, clothes, toys for the kids, you know, things that you just never use. It just sits there and collects dust, right? So I did that, right? Because we moved. We moved uh, into a new place. And I saw all this stuff I haven't seen in a long time. So what I did was I went online, went to the app store on my phone. I downloaded this app called Mercari, M-E-R-C-A-R-I right? And Nicole and I started posting stuff on there, like books and clothes and hats, used stuff, right? Good condition, but used stuff. And we put it up there. And literally the stuff started selling in like minutes, minutes, my friends. I remember when Nicole put up a makeup palette that she hasn't used in years, things sold in like 45 seconds. And uh, you ship it out. The, you could either pay for the shipping or the buyer pays the shipping. Put it in an envelope, send it out to the post office, right? I think we made like maybe like four or $500 in selling stuff that we would never use or stuff that we have not used, right? And that's the power of the internet. Everybody can do this. If you need Friday night, date night money, dude, sell something you ain't use in a while that you're not going to miss. Throw it up there on the internet. <laughs> it's like uh, like an online garage sales and you can use like Facebook Marketplace. You could use uh, LetGo, Poshmark, all those other websites. Man, these websites are millions and millions of dollars in transactions on these websites, my friends, of people selling stuff. And it doesn't have to be low ticket. My, yo, this is the crazy. So <laughs> I had a phantom drone. Okay, this drone was broken. I flew it into a tree. Drone was shattered. And I never got around to getting it fixed. I could have got it fixed. I just never did. I sold it on Macari. It was broken. <laughs> Thing was broken. And somebody bought it for like 200 some bucks. And they were just going to fix it themselves. So it was either throw it in the garbage or sell it online. It's the power of the internet, my friends. Yo, Luke, Welcome. Wow, we got two Lukes, man. Luke Wong, Luke Slapper. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for me. My name is Ross Alex. Thanks so much for joining in on the broadcast. Really means a lot to me. If you haven't already liked the stream, if we can get this live stream to 40 likes, man, I will just, you have no idea. You have no idea what I'll do if we can get this live stream to 40 likes. I remember the video when you broke it. <laughs> yeah, man. Flew that sucker into a tree. 
I got four flips going here in San Antonio, bro, off of flipping on fire. No way, Rick. No way, dude. You better message me, man. No way. Rick is doing four flips. Rick, you got the program, right? My man. Rick's the man. Everybody follow Rick. I'll see you guys later, all right? Be good. Enjoy your evening.